on the phone. What's go what's going on, Ja? What's going on, man? I'm doing good. How are you, man? I'm uh, doing pretty pretty good right now. Well, I wanna um thank you for being on the show this evening. I wanna thank uh, you. Yeah, I definitely appreciate that. Okay. Um let's go ahead and begin. Um what made you decide to be a wrestler, man? Um I've always watched professional wrestling, you know, since I was in, like, elementary school. I remember, I remember when, you know, my uh, dad or whatever, he used to always order the pay-per-views or whatever, and I used to sit around and watch it with them. But, I mean, you know, it, it's always been something that was always in the back of my mind, no matter, you know, where I was in life. It was always, you know, that, that I, I still wanted to be a wrestler. And it was always something that my friends always told me that it was something that I, that I should always do because they've seen how much time I invested in a <laughs> watching wrestling and things like that over, you know, over like a decade, you know what I'm saying? So it was always a hobby. So who were uh, your favorite wrestlers growing up? Um, Honestly, I kind of grew up in the Attitude Era. It was really when I really, really started watching, you know, wrestling in the 90s. So I'd probably say like uh, like, like uh, Bret Hart, um, you know, uh, Stone Cold, but mostly like Hart Foundation, The Rock. Um, always like Kevin Nash, uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, uh, you know, British Bulldog. But I mean, that, that was one moment that, that really changed my whole life when I watched wrestling. It was the night after Survivor Series when, when The Rock had uh, joined the corporation. <laughs> it was that moment. It's that, it's that moment when he came out there as, 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 as the corporation's champion. It was something about that moment when he came out there and I told myself, I want to be him. I want to be what he's doing. You know, it was all, I, I've watched wrestling the same time before that, but it was that very moment I seen him come out there. That night after Survivor Series 98, <laughs> it just did something to me. So ever since then, I knew in my mind, like, I wanted to be a wrestler, you know. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, you know, The Rock, those days, when he actually had hair at the time, and, you know, he was definitely... Uh, the quintessential talent that he is today, and uh, to see him all of a sudden make a comeback, winning back the title, staying in good shape I mean, it obviously helped because of all the action films he has done throughout the years. Uh, but he he is special, he, he God put him on earth for a reason to entertain, and he certainly knows how to do that. <laughs> He definitely I mean, I mean, and you got to uh, think about this. I mean, as a man of color, I mean, it's definitely a big, a big, a big accomplishment, you know what I'm saying? Just being a man of color in the wrestling industry and accomplishing a whole lot is a really big accomplishment for everybody, you know, anybody of color. It seems like the wrestling industry, uh, well, mostly the big leagues, is, is giving African Americans more opportunities now than it was you know, back in the Rocky Johnson, Tony Atlas days, I mean, you got the likes of a R Truth, a Kofi Kingston, a Kenny King, Mark Henry, uh, the list goes on and on. I mean, how do you feel, you being an African American, to see some that there's more African Americans getting an opportunity compared to it was maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago? Um, it, it it feels good. I mean, it, it feels you know kind of a uh, long long overdue, kind of as long as overdue as uh, Booker T going into the Hall of Fame. But um, you know, it's still a lot, a lot of work to do. I think that as far as African American wrestlers, uh, we have to get out of that category of doing the same thing, the same thing, and the same thing, and the same thing, instead of being different. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, uh, The Rock was somewhat the same, but really, really different because he had a lot of skills that a lot of wrestlers didn't have. You know, you got a lot of different athletes that are African American, but they're still doing the same gimmick. As, as you know, it's either rap, you know, rapper or hood or something like that. It's a typical gimmick. You know, that's really not going to get them that far. You know, so you know, so really, in, in the long run, they're being held down because they're not getting the opportunity. You know, I honestly believe like a guy like 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 uh, R Truth, he should he should have been the world champion by now. You know, he's very talented. You know, and, and he has ring psychology. He's a good athlete. I think that he would be a good guy to represent the world title. 
But will he get that opportunity? Who knows? Yeah. But I mean, it's definitely changing. You know that, that you know. But I, it's, it's definitely a lot of a lot of things to change, and it's going to take more time. You know. But uh, I kind of feel like I remember uh, listening to a documentary, and uh, the Rock's father had once said, "If you can be a wrestler of color, you have to be the best." You know what I'm saying? Be the best, not be like everybody else. You know, and as far that's like you know being like being a standard, pretty much. I mean, I mean after the Rock, I mean he he set the bar high for, for a lot of black guys coming in after him, and you know maybe some people haven't quite was unable to get that main event status. And you know, and what you brought up about the whole ga- gangsters, rappers, thugs, gimmicks. I mean that is unfortunate. That's just a lot of stereotyping and stuff. I mean, you got a lot of minds in this business. You think they would find creative ways to, you know, for African Americans, but I guess they just assume this is what people want to see. You know, this is what they want black people to be portrayed as. I mean, there's too much stereotyping going on, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely very, 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 very unfortunate, and, and you have to find something in yourself to kind of stand out, you know, uh, outside of everybody else. So it's kind of like like myself uh, being, you know, being a being a, being a Rasta fire, you know, that's not something that you see in, in Rasta, you know, and that's really just an extension of myself. I was always taught that, you know, if you're going to be something or have a gimmick, it needs to be something you believe in and, and an extension of yourself. You know, it's just like a... Uh, let's take for example Steve Austin. In real life, Steve Austin likes it from there. That's an extension of himself. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's the same thing, you know. And you, you can't continue to use the same thing over and over and over again because I mean, you take a gimmick like uh, Clown Time, you know, they can put that gimmick on anybody. You know, and uh, it, it's definitely a lot of changes that that need to be made. But we you have to actually want to make them change it ourselves. You know. So, um, do you remember your first wrestling match that you ever had? And if so, who was your opponent and what company did you work for at the time? Um, my first wrestling match was at uh, APWA, and I actually did not know that I was going to have a match that night. Uh, one of my good friends, who's now one of the members of the Shotty Kings, uh, Kindred, you know, he actually had took me under his wing, and he's, you know, and um, it was one of them nights where, you know, I wasn't even working, you know, I wasn't, I, I, I had never had a match up until that point, and I was just kind of pretty much put out there, so, you know, with with no gear, um, and and everything that I learned at, at Gilbert for, the, for those past two years, I just, I just utilized it, and it, it came out pretty good. But at the same time, um, it was the match was actually against uh, uh, Jacob Image, <laughs> which is funny. Because now he's part of the Shadow Kings, you know. So, um, you know, it was it was a really good, good response in the crowd. Uh, Don West loved it. Um, he, he gave me the opportunity, um, which is you know, which is which is really really good because somebody just gives you opportunity like that, and and, and they don't know you. They, they've never seen you work. They don't know anything about you. Maybe you gave the opportunity. That's definitely you know a blessing. But I mean, at the same time, I got a lot, I got a lot of hate from a lot of different people in the wrestling industry that didn't get that same opportunity that I got. So it felt good to have my first match there. And at the same time, I was uh, I was being, uh, let's say, uh, 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 I can't think of the word. <laughs> I was being like, for, like almost criminalized for having a match, <laughs> you know. But other than that, I mean, it, it was a good experience. You know, with, with all that hate and everything, I mean, how do you feel about the politics? In, in, in wrestling, I mean, as far as it could be managers, it could be bookers, it could be fellow wrestlers, you know, bickering back and forth. Like, I mean, how how do you deal with that? You know, with all the with all the scrutiny that's going on in this business. Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of people still realize that uh, at the end of the day, wrestling business is about money, and everybody wants to be uh, that guy, everybody wants to be him, everybody wants to be that big popular person that makes it, and unfortunately everybody's not going to make it. But um, I mean, at the same time, you, you can't be distracted by everything that is not important, and that's why a lot of people, a lot of guys mess up, they wind up worrying about uh, a lot of different things, 
that they should be worried about. They should be worried about, uh, you know, training and how can they, you know, better themselves and, you know, how, how can they can serve and know what they are now. And, um, I, I don't look for anything in, in professional wrestling, but uh, just the actual the joy of wrestling. You know, that's what I'm there for. I'm not there for anything else. I'm only there to live a dream, you know, and this is a dream that I had since I was seven years old, you know. To me, that's what it's about. Maybe other people that get into business for different reasons. And that's the thing. Everybody's into something different. Everybody's not in it for the same thing. Um, that's why I really, you know, as, as much as I can say. Well, honestly, there are, now, nowadays, it's becoming, some people kind of say, like, pro wrestling is like a dying thing and it's, it's starving and it's fully dying. I mean, I'd probably say yes and I'd probably say no. But, I mean, you get a lot of people that, that aren't trained you know, and they don't really know much about the business, and they get booked, and you get a lot of crappy promoters that, that open up, you know, uh, promotions that don't don't really make any sense. I mean, I remember back in the day, you go to wrestling shows, and, you know, they would have mats on the ground. They don't even have mats anymore, so if somebody cracks that straw, that's pretty much their fault, you know? So there's a lot of different things uh, that needs to be changed in, in professional wrestling if we wanted to... Uh, continue to go further because at the same time, if you're hey, if you're in an indie independent level, you gotta understand that people watch wrestling on TV. They're always gonna think that that's better than what you're doing. So if we don't clean it up and make it look more presentable, they're gonna be a joke, and we're not gonna we're not gonna survive. You know, and that's and that's the god honest truth. You know what? Those people fail to realize that the people that they see on TV. They didn't get their career started on the backyard. They got their career started on the indie scene, for crying out loud. I mean, without the indie scene, there is no pro. So, it's just, look, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just blasphemous for people to think, you know, uh, the indie this, indie that, you know, but they, I guess they've never been to an indie show. They may not be aware that how hard it is to get to that level. I mean, you know, I, I talked to a lot of wrestlers throughout the years, and people say that backyard wrestling is not the way to go. You got to get professionally trained. You got to go through, you got to earn your respect. You got you to, gotta, you know, pay your dues. I mean, what's your thoughts on the whole pay your dues? Where do you think, as a wrestler, it takes to pay your dues? Is it like just going through matches, doing more, or just doing more than just wrestling in general? Um, I would, I would probably say, um, I went to Gilbert's Professional Wrestling Academy and a lot of guys that trained for professional wrestling prior to that, they always made us realize that we had it easier than them. A lot of people that trained at like, like, like uh, bone, bone breakers and different places, they said that they really had it hard than uh, what we had at, at, at Gilbert's. It, it kind of felt like Gilbert's was like a luxury compared to what they came up, you know, and doing. But, I mean, we, 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 we were always taught, you know, to speak to everybody. When you go to shows and you go to training, uh, you know, you learn how to take down the ring, you know, clean up behind yourself. And, just, and really just, just just show respect and always be able to listen and be able to take uh, cri uh, criticism, you know. And you got to understand that when someone in the business is a lot, a lot longer than you, you have to respect them, you know. That's all part of paying your dues and listening, you know, and uh, putting in time. Training is, is really one of the one of the main things. I think that a lot of wrestlers don't do enough training, you know. So let's talk about the Shotta Kings real quick. I mean, it's a very cool name first and foremost, and number two, how did that team got put together? Was that y'all's idea or was that the company's idea? Uh, um, I, I've always was, you know, interested in doing somewhat of a group. I remember when I used to train in 2010, I wanted to kind of get a bunch of guys together that kind of represented something somewhat hint of a nation domination type type thing, but not like taking the idea. Because any time you get uh, a bunch of brothers on one side, people are saying nation of domination. That was really like the only you know, black group we ever had, really, that really stuff anything that really comes up. But, I mean, it, it, it just was, 
kind of the concept of how to be someone about ourselves. Um, you know, as, as far as, you know, being, being from Jamaica and things like that and traveling the countries and things like that, you know, are we ready to represent exactly who we are and what we are about? And we all have the same views on life and the same views on wrestling. So we want to, our main purpose is to, is to be different, you know, and stand aside from what everybody else is doing, you know, and, and we are, and we are, you know, representing a change in the wrestling industry, you know, uh, you know, and, and that's really all, all that's about, you know, it's, it's really about a takeover period where, you know, you don't ask for anything. You take what you want, you know, you, you want that shot at those belts, you take it. You want to get booked on this show, you take it. And that's really all it's about. There's no more asking, you know. It's, it's just take what we want by any means necessary. That's the main concept of what, of what we're trying to do. So do you have any upcoming wrestling shows you'd like to promote? Um, we will be at uh, AP, APWA in July, and we'll be at Triple WA, and um, and we have a couple of other things in the works right now. I'll be sure to you know post that up and uh, and get the information out to everybody as soon as possible. So we probably have about three to four upcoming shows in uh, in July. And for people that want to get in touch with you, social media wise, why don't you go ahead and promote your Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, any other links people need to know. Um, you can find me on Facebook at uh, J Cole J A I K O L E. You can find me on Instagram with the same name. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, the same name on Twitter, J Cole Shaking. Um, you can find us on YouTube also. If you can have a dream match against any wrestler, it could be indie, it could be pro, dead or alive. What would your dream match be? Who would your opponent be? Uh, that's 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 very 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 challenging. Um, uh, man. Um, I would have to say my dream match would be honestly. I would want to be in the ladder match. Uh, the ladder match is is one of my dream matches. Um. And the person that I would probably want to go in a ladder match against, uh, that's kind of a hard thing. And because I know it's probably not likely, but I would probably say, uh, they could probably say Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, I say that because for a big guy, you know, he, he, he has, you know, he, he can get up, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he definitely can, definitely can work. He has some ups he could do, uh, Pickups, he could do leapfrogs, he could do slips, he could do everything. You know what I'm saying? He was definitely, I have to say, one of the most versatile big man uh, that WWE or any other company has ever seen. I mean, like you said, he could do just about almost anything for a guy right around a 300 plus pound range. I mean, you don't you don't see a lot of that anymore. I mean, wh whatever he was doing, whatever the the hard work he was doing, I mean, he he made that he made those moves look easy for, uh, compared to a light heavyweight or cruiserweight doing it. I mean, he was an inc he was incredible to watch. I mean, you know, if you take guys like like uh, Bam Bam Bigelow and, and and Mike Awesome, guys like that, they were about two hundred and seventy five pounds plus. And they're doing leapfrogs and they're doing suicide dives. I mean, I think it definitely broke the barrier on what big guys could do. And I kind of want to do things similar to that. I don't want to go overboard with it, but I want to show, you know, uh, me just being a, being an athlete in general and not just doing, you know, I I I I, I know there's a label for big guys, you know, with the the moves, you know, the, the big boots and the the sidewalk slams, you know. But I, I kind of feel like there's so many big guys in the wrestling industry, and they all do the same thing, you know. Then why not be different, you know? Absolutely, man. Well, it was great talking to you. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Uh, shout out to the Shot of Kings. And um, best of success goes out to you. And uh, thank you for being on the show this evening. Definitely appreciate it. I'll definitely be back anytime soon. Appreciate it, brother. Absolutely, man. You have a good night. Okay.
Ah, bye-bye.